Hey everyone, thanks for dropping on by once again. Today we're going to be playing around with a bit of, I like to call a bump node prism kind of visual effect with a little touch and a little spice of the compositor to get this tame impala psychedelic visual that you can drop on to you know reggae music trance depends on how you want it you can probably control the speed once you kind of see how i do it um that's pretty much it so let's dive on in and thanks for dropping by once again so hopping right on in i'm gonna go ahead and delete some of our default values and we're going to check some of our things that I suggest you should save as your startup settings. But I can make another video on that. Turn on ambient occlusion. Turn on bloom. Turn on screen space reflections. And let's also dive into color management. And let's just go ahead and put this on medium high contrast for now. Now, the other part, let's go over to the edit section. Click preferences. You need to make sure for everyone. On your animation and default interpolation, you want that to be linear. I repeat, you want it to be linear, not Bezier. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so now let's just jump straight into the modeling. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and let's do a vertical split. I'm just gonna split it so we can see one of the active camera. Let's go ahead and split this as well and make it horizontal. I like this like three pronged kind of setup makes it a bit easier for me you can go it your own way like BK okay now let's go ahead and add an iconosphere let's turn the subdivisions down to one let's scale it by pressing S and dragging out um, what we can do for everyone let's just go ahead and it's very interesting that it's a negative but I'm just going to do a positive huh. interesting Let's just make it 13 for now. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our camera in. So hold tilde, press on top, and let's go ahead and bring our camera in. Now within our top right one, we're gonna hold tilde again and view camera. I'm just trying to make sure we're inside of this iconosphere. You can zoom in, you can kind of get a visual going on here. So now that we have that, let's just go into our environment before we dabble into the materials we have a bit of our setup here set up mm. the next step we're going to do is we're going to add in some lights and then we're also going to play around with the material of the prism to make it that kind of cool reflection so we have a view for our camera let's click our camera i like to set up some of the viewport display settings i like to turn up this passive part I don't know how to pronounce that perfectly. Called position guides, I like to do centered and thirds. And then now we're gonna add in um, our lights. Let's put in a point light. And let's go ahead and actually, yeah, let's just add one light for right now to test things out. Make this like 300, turn out shading, whatever. Cool. And Make sure you're chilling in the render tab. Let's go ahead and select our iconosphere. Let's change this viewport to the shader editor. Click on the iconosphere one more time. Let's create a new material. Call it uh, sphere, whatever you like. Now we're gonna go ahead and play with some things. One, we're gonna make this base color dark, super dark. We're gonna increase the metallic value by quite a bit. You can see reflections coming in turn down the roughness <laughs> kind of cool could be a cool effect already um, now what we're gonna do create a bump node boom connect that to the normal then we're gonna go ahead and create connect uh, Voronoi texture connect the distance to the height I can see something happening I press control T now from here if you're wondering what how that control t thing just happened if it didn't work for you listen closely click edit preferences we're going to go ahead and into add-ons and then we're going to type in node wrangler you could just click turn off the wrangler then you're going to go ahead and turn that on 
go ahead now come back into our bit of our setup here what you're gonna do is uh, we're gonna bump the scale up a bit here I bumped it up to like 20 ish you can go ahead and create a value node let's connect that to our scale you can connect that value make it like uh, three or four depending on how big you want to go here now you can see we kind of have this like star like galaxy type view which is great um, but what we're gonna do is here we're gonna add a few more lights so I think our lights a little bit brighter 500 watts and press shift D duplicate and hold it up on the Z axis and add in a few colors and blue do another light let's do okay like three times and bring it up at the z axis okay add in green let's go ahead and add in one last color let's make it let's just make this one the white one okay so at this point we kind of have it uh set up the one Taking a second here. You could play with a bit of the roughness. Just make it look kind of interesting. Oh. One thing you want to add now, I forget, sorry. Connect the object to the vector. And now you can see we have a bit more of a playful zone for when we do our final composition stuff. Okay. Now we want to animate the rotation of the prism. So go ahead and make sure you can zoom out over here. Press it. Go ahead and make sure you start on the zero keyframe. Keyframe rotation on the z-axis into single keyframe. Go ahead and move to the last one, 250, 300, add 360 into another single keyframe. Now you can see we have a bit more of this rotating. Things are bouncing around. Life is living. Everything is good. Okay. <clears throat> Here's a point where I suggest you probably <laughs> save your work. I'm just gonna call this space loop this is where we are. cool now let's go over to the compositing uh, section and let's insert a viewer node shift a by the way if you're wondering how to add that so viewer node add in a reroute oops if you misclick press G drag it in do lens distortion and let's add a little bit of jitter and a little bit of distortion and I like to just quickly render one still image just so we can get a brief preview now if this is your cup of tea at this point it's gonna uh, rotate and you can have this like spacey kind of thing me personally let's just stick to kind of what I was showing you so we'll val uh, not a value node add a mix node boom let's connect it to the, uh, the bottom Let's go ahead and add a color. And you can pretty much see here, depending on what color. Okay. Depending on what color we add, once you turn down the, the fraction, I like to leave it around somewhere where it's like, you still get a bright image. You can see the color changes. Now you're probably wondering, okay, how can we make the color change in the animation? Here's a little tricky spot, so pay attention closely. Right click, insert keyframe into the color. Now, we have 250 frames, and we want it to pretty much kind of travel around here. So I like to drop one into 125, which is half. Let's drop it on the green. Insert keyframe, right click, and let's come back around. And if you want to make sure that you're on the right color, 
Let's go over here, go to the hex, copy that value, go to 250, insert it, insert that keyframe, and it should now you can kind of see the colors are just like bouncing around. And if you want to get a little more creative, I gotta do a bit of math. Let's just do this real quick. 250 divided by 3. It's 83. Doesn't really help me out. <laughs> if you want, what we could do is just insert some keyframes in between the two of them. So we can insert a nice little red. And then we can insert a t -t 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 purple. Maybe. Cool. And you want to start it on the right color, on the same color, and end it on the same color. So when it plays through, I don't know if we can actually. Can't really preview this because it's something in the compositor node, and it's gonna have to render each one. But you can see you get this like rainbow kind of effect. Cool. Now if you want to render this out, go over here to the output properties. Go to output. Make sure it's FFmpeg video. Container MPEG4. Let's go ahead and make it high quality because I'm going to use this as a preview. And when you're naming the file, you can go ahead and I like to call it space effect tutorial finished. And that's another one we have done. So here we are. You got another tutorial done. Patch yourself on the back. And hopefully I'll be seeing you around in the next video. Feel free to jump into the Discord. There's a type form I'm going to put below. We're trying to keep the quality up. So we're just going to ask a few questions. And uh, mostly you'll probably get accepted. But thanks again. And I'll see you around.